Hey there, have you ever thought about what's happening beneath your feet? Believe it or not, there's water underground filling tiny spaces between the soil and rock. That's how we get wells and aquifers, hidden water sources that people rely on every day. This underground water plays a role in where and how we construct buildings, wind turbines, and other large structures. Engineers need to understand what's below the ground just as much as what's above it. Today, we're diving into groundwater and the water table, two important subsurface concepts that shape construction projects like the wind turbines you see behind me. Below the Earth's surface, water fills the spaces between soil, sand, and rock. This hidden water is called groundwater. Believe it or not, some of the water that comes from your tap might have started as groundwater. It just gets cleaned and disinfected before we use it. So where does groundwater come from? Groundwater from rain and melting snow that slowly soaks into the ground over time. In some cases, water from rivers and lakes can also seep down and add to groundwater supplies. But if all this water is underground, why doesn't it just rise to the surface? Well, the ground acts like a sponge, holding water in tiny spaces between soil, sand, and rock. This keeps the, the groundwater stored underground instead of flowing freely like a river or a lake. However, in some places, groundwater can still reach the surface naturally. This happens in springs where underground water finds a pathway through cracks in the rock and slowly flows out. It can also happen after heavy rain when so much water soaks into the ground that the upper layers become fully soaked, forcing extra water to overflow into the surface, causing flooding. But most of the time, groundwater stays trapped in the tiny spaces underground. Some underground areas hold a lot of water, almost like a giant underground sponge. This is called an aquifer. Aquifers store water and people pump it up through wells to use for drinking, farming, and even city water supplies. You might have seen a well before, a deep hole that lets us pull water from underground. Wells work by reaching down into an aquifer where the water is stored. The water table is the very top of the groundwater. Imagine this container represents a section of the ground. Everything below this line is completely soaked with water. That's called the saturated zone. Everything above it is dry with air filling the spaces between the soil and the rock. This water level is called a water table. In this container, the water level is approximately three inches. The distance from the surface to the water tells us how deep the water table is. A smaller number means the water table is high. A larger number means the water table is lower. Just like I'm measuring the water level in this container, scientists and engineers measure real water tables underground. It is important to note that the water table doesn't stay in one place. It moves up and down depending on rainfall, droughts, and how much water people pump out of the ground. Here's something interesting. Groundwater doesn't just stay in one place. It moves through the ground, but very slowly. This movement is called seepage. The speed of seepage depends on the type of soil or rock underground. Let's do an experiment to see how this works. Seepage depends on the tiny spaces between soil particles, and different types of soil have different amounts of space between their particles. Let's see what happens when we pour water into two different materials, sand and clay. See how the water quickly moves through the sand but barely seeps through the clay? That's because sand has a high porosity, meaning it has lots of tiny spaces for water to flow through. For clay, it has low porosity, so it holds onto water instead of letting it seep through. So why do engineers care about groundwater, the water table, and seepage? Because if they don't study what's happening underground before construction, things can go very wrong. Ignoring groundwater can lead to flooding, sinking foundations, cracks in buildings, or even collapsed structures. Take wind turbines, for example. They need deep, stable foundations to stay upright. If the water table is too high, the ground can become unstable and difficult to build on. And if seepage happens too fast, it can wash away soil, leading to erosion, foundation cracks, and even structural failures. This is why engineers study groundwater movement before building anything, because what's beneath the surface is just as important as what's above it. But what about structures that are built directly on water? like offshore wind turbines, bridges, and even floating tunnels? Even though these structures are in open water, the same concepts we talked about, seepage, soil stability, and strong foundations still apply. Because they don't sit on solid ground, engineers need to use special techniques to keep them standing. For example, offshore wind turbines in shallow water have huge towers that are stuck deep into the seafloor, like legs planted on the ground. 
In deeper water, they actually float, but they're held in place with heavy chains attached to the ocean floor. Bridges, like the Golden Gate Bridge, have strong support because they span over the water. Engineers drive massive pillars deep into the ground so the bridge doesn't sink or move. They use something called a caisson, which is like a giant hollow box that keeps water out while workers build those pillars inside. Even though these structures are in open water, engineers have to study the sea or river floor conditions and how water moves around them to make sure the structure stays safe and stable before building anything. Engineers use science to measure the groundwater, the water table, and seepage before starting any big project. Understanding what's underground helps keeps buildings, tunnels, bridges, and wind turbines safe and long-lasting. So next time you see a wind turbine or a tall building, just remember there's lots of planning about the underground surface to make sure that everything stays standing. That's it for today's Science Short. We will see you next time. And remember, keep challenging everything.